today's show, the Renault Zoe EV gets a more powerful motor, Porsche stops making diesel engines as part of its transition to electric propulsion, and Tesla's cloud-based computer system is crypto-hacked. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host. I spend all week surfing through the best stories in the world of clean energy and transport so you don't have to, and then package it up in time for your Sunday morning coffee. I'm starting today's show with some great news for all you Kiwi Renault fans, specifically the news that Renault has just released a brand new motor for the popular Zoe EV hatchback. The five-seat family car has undergone a gradual evolution in the years since its launch, getting upgrades to its onboard chameleon charging system, the original 64 kilowatt motor, and then last year getting a massive battery pack upgrade from 24 kilowatt hours to 40 kilowatt hours. Now to match the larger battery pack, this new motor upgrade takes the car's onboard power to 80 kilowatts, the same as the original Nissan Leaf. Renault says the motor improves the car's acceleration between 80 and 120 kilometers per hour, that's 50 to 75 miles per hour, by almost two seconds, and it will be found in the all-new 2018 Zoe EV. At the same time, Renault has just priced its Master ZE range of electric vans in France, with pre-tax prices starting from €48,200 for the L1H1 version and €46,700 for the L2 platform cab. Pricing elsewhere has yet to be announced, but it's worth noting because it's yet another zero-emission electric vehicle you can buy from the French automaker. Here's one for you. Which automaker made more electric vehicles in 2017 than any other? You'd be forgiven for thinking it was Tesla or Nissan, but as data published this week shows, it was Chinese firm BYD for the third year in a row. As our friends at Green Car Reports noted this week, BYD, which makes a wide range of electric vehicles, including cars, buses and trucks, also makes lithium-ion battery packs and happens to be a privately owned company, making it something of a special creature in China. In total, it sold 113,669 plug-in vehicles last year. But don't think for a minute that these kind of figures are freakishly high, because its nearest rival, BAIC, sold just over 103,000 plug-in cars. Kind of makes our Western EV sales totals look a bit naff now, doesn't it? I'm sure by now that you're more than aware of how hard Tesla is working to ramp up production of its Model 3 in order to meet demand. But did you know that Model 3 isn't the only Tesla with a long wait list? Yep, it turns out that Tesla is getting something of a backlog of orders for its Model S and its Model X too, with Tesla announcing this week that there's now a four to five month wait time for anyone ordering a brand new Tesla Model S or Tesla Model X from the factory. Sure, you're likely to get a new Model S or Model X before you'd get a Model 3 if you were to order one today, but five months is a long time to wait, especially in Tesla world where specifications and features can change very quickly. For the past nine years or so, Porsche has offered customers of its Cayenne, Macan or Panameras the chance to spec a 3.0-litre V6 engine in place of the more traditional gasoline one usually found powering a Porsche. Those engines, developed by Porsche's sister company Audi, were originally marketed as having more low-end torque and a better fuel economy than their gasoline siblings. But after the Dieselgate scandal of 2015 and Porsche's involvement in it, thanks to the aforementioned Audi supply engine featuring cheat codes, Porsche has gone a little cold on diesel, eager to distance itself from both Volkswagen and Audi. And this week we learned that Porsche is ending all diesel powertrain options for its vehicles moving forwards, instead replacing them with plug-in drivetrain options in the near future. We also learned Porsche is setting itself a goal of having one quarter of its vehicle sales to be completely electric by 2025. And given that's only seven years away, I think it's important to celebrate just how far Porsche has come in recent years in regards to EVs, don't you? Mercedes, another company eager to make the switch to electric cars after years of skepticism towards them, has announced an all-new plug-in vehicle this week. Unlike some of its previous announcements and unveilings, however, it's not a car. 
What it is, is the E-Actros, a heavy-duty truck which Mercedes hopes to bring into series production from 2021. With around 200 kilometers of range per charge, that's around 124 miles, the E-Actros isn't going to be a long-distance vehicle, but with a choice of 18 or 25 metric tons of payload, it should help transform busy urban delivery routes which rarely drive above these kind of ranges a day. There will, of course, be more information as the E-Actros nears production launch, but 10 Benz customers are now proudly putting these vehicles through their tests, so watch this space. We often hear of new car companies and startups wanting to take Tesla's crown in the EV marketplace. And this week, we got to see a video of one such vehicle in the form of the Aspark Owl, a Japanese supercar which was first unveiled last year in Frankfurt. The Owl is an interesting vehicle. First off, it weighs just 850 kilograms. That's about 1,875 pounds. And its all-wheel drivetrain produces a total peak power of around 320 kilowatts. But here's the really interesting part. Rather than use a lithium-ion battery pack on its own, the OWL uses a bank of supercapacitors too, meaning it can accelerate itself from 0 to 100 kph, that's 0 to 62 miles per hour, in just 1.9 seconds. It's going to enter limited production in the next year or so, but the price isn't something I'm guessing you should ask if you even have to think about asking the price in order to buy one of the 50 A-Spark OWLs that's going to be made. Tesla's massive cloud computing system is the brains behind a lot of things that Tesla's cars can do, as well as help processing the petabytes of data that it collects from customers' cars in order to improve the autopilot functionality. That same system helps coordinate telematics that I'm sure every Tesla owner has used at some point or another to interact with their car. And at the heart of this massive cloud computing system is, of course, some serious processing power. And this week, we learned that some nefarious sorts have been trying to hack part of Tesla's cloud computing system to harness that power in order to mine cryptocurrencies, an activity colloquially known as crypto jacking. While one of Tesla's systems was compromised, the company says the attack was limited to internally used engineering test cars, and it believes no customer privacy or vehicle safety information was compromised. Toyota may currently not have an all-electric vehicle in production, but it has announced this week that it's developed a new type of magnet for use in electric vehicle motors that will slash the amount of neodymium needed by 20%. A rare earth metal known for its incredible power, neodymium is in high demand these days, thanks in part to the EV revolution. And while it's actually quite a common element here on Earth, Deposits are so thinly distributed around the globe, it's quite difficult to mine in high quantities. So Toyota's breakthrough, which also reduces the cost of electric motors, should help make EVs more affordable. Don't expect that change tomorrow, though, because Toyota is currently predicting we'll see this new magnet in production, which uses lanthium and cerium in about 10 years' time. Mitsubishi announced a new set of mild updates are on the way for its 2019 Outlander plug-in hybrid SUV this week, improving generator output, motor output, battery power rating, and battery capacity. The rear motor will increase to 66 kilowatts, while the battery capacity will grow to 13.8 kilowatt hours. This should give the Outlander plug-in hybrid more time in EV mode and provide better overall fuel economy. But it's also worth noting that there are two new driving modes entering the mix in the form of sport and snow. The updated model will enter the market at the tail end of this year, so if you're interested in buying one, it may be worth waiting just a little longer to get one. And finally, in the Tesla world, Jason Hughes is something of a legend. Not only has he helped owners peek under the hood of their cars, but he's turned a pre-autopilot car into one with autopilot, tweaked performance of a rear-wheel drive model, and carried out battery swaps. And now his latest endeavor, HSR Motors, is selling Tesla conversion parts to help EV enthusiasts add Tesla parts to their own EV conversions. And this, a Honda Accord called the Tesla Londa, built by YouTube channel Jimmy Built, is one of the first cars to make use of those parts. It uses a Chevy Volt battery pack paired with a Tesla motor and HSR motor controller, and it's crazy fast. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the way it sits on its wheels, but hey, I'd love to see an HSR motor system powering the Morris Minor that our very own Kate Walton Elliott is currently converting to electric. The only question is how could we help her? 
And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Music.